My dad chose his new family over me, and now I'm just a guest in his house. Am I wrong for not being happy for him? When my dad moved into a bigger house, the older sister got her own room while I had to share one with the younger sister every weekend. The three small drawers I had were soon just one drawer because the little sister wanted the other two for her toys. Slowly, I started visiting my dad less and less. Then everything went especially wrong when my dad got his girlfriend pregnant after one year. They got married and I didn't know that for a whole month because he didn't even tell me. I also didn't know my baby half-sister was born until weeks after she came home from the hospital. To make his new family happy, he started spoiling them and stopped paying child support for me and my mom. His wife is a jobless gold digger, woo, only cooks and cleans and shops. Her older daughter is having her college paid for by my dad, and the younger daughter is the definition of a 10-year-old Sephora kid. As for my half-sister, she is still a toddler but is clearly spoiled and hates the word no. The routine I used to have with my dad is now dead. As for my stepdad, he's been with my mom since I was five. Apparently, though I don't remember it, I once called him dad and because of that my dad told me I shouldn't love the man like a dad because he's not really my father. Apparently that's why I started acting like I hated my stepdad. I never knew why I felt that way about him since he'd never been anything but good to me and in the last few years I've felt much closer to him. He feels like the dad that my birth father should try to be. Over time, my dad has started to treat me differently. He rants to me about his political beliefs and conspiracy theories about aliens and stuff. But he also brags about his new business and his new family. And if I ever try to share anything with him, he gets annoyed and shuts me up before continuing with his stories. It's like now he sees me as a buddy rather than his freaking daughter. Also, it was during these last few years that I learned the reason he and my mom divorced was not because they weren't right for each other, but rather because my father cheated on my mom while visiting his family in Canada. I am now 15 and I have become a completely different person than the one my birth dad remembers. I no longer love the beach or soccer and I now love music and reading and writing. I have written and published two books since 2022 and am writing the third in my series. My stepdad supports my dreams and loves me so much that he brags about me to friends and family and calls me his daughter. My stepdad has an actual daughter who I love like a real sister, but she lives up north with her boyfriend and I don't see her often. Still though, I love them more the, and I love my birth dad and half-sister who I'm actually related to. My dad blames me for never calling, though because of how he's treated me lately, I don't feel like I owe it to him. I also go months at a time without visiting him now because I no longer feel comfortable at that house, especially since the bed I sleep on over there is literally considered as their guest bed. In my birth dad's house, I am a guest. Because of all of this, I resent my dad. I haven't told anyone about this, so no one is calling me a jerk, but I'm wondering if I am, because my dad is in love with his new family, and I'm wondering if it's a bad thing I'm not happy for him. Am I the jerk? Update 1. So, since I made the initial post, I've only visited my dad's house once, and safe to say, I truly am nothing more than an uncomfortable guest in that house. I should start off by saying that every time I spend a few months without going to his house, my dad tries to play all innocent and calls me on Fridays to ask when he should pick me up. I never answer because he always calls me when I'm in a class or busy with studying so he'll call my mom. But because he never asks me in advance, I tend to have plans on weekends with my cousins, friends, or just to work on writing since I am still working on my third book and it takes a lot of focus that I can't get in his house. Actually, I'm now just gonna call him Eric. He's honestly not been as much of a dad figure to me as my stepdad has. Anyway, it was my mom who had decided I would go over to his house. Despite the fact that Eric hasn't paid child support in over two years now, and I hate going to his house, my mom says I should just visit from time to time to keep him from getting the court involved. She confuses me, sometimes saying that he's a deadbeat man, but also sometimes saying that he's my loving dad who deserves my respect. However, under the circumstances, I'm fairly certain that nothing would be any different since I never visit him, and D, he doesn't pay child support anyway. In fact, once on Christmas, he bought a bunch of new gifts for his family and wrapped them up in everything, but weeks before Christmas when I was visiting, he drove to Walmart so his wife could do groceries, and he handed me $200 and said, Merry Christmas, buy yourself something and the rest can be child support or whatever. I bought two books but the rest of the money that was supposedly child support was nothing near to the amount he owed. I have told my mom I would be happier if he lost custody of me and my stepdad adopted me. But she thinks that's too extreme and says he's still your dad. He deserves your respect and love. Now, about the weekend I visited him, from the minute Eric picked me up, all he talked about was his new family. He talked about the older sister and her boyfriend, the younger sister and the shopping she does, and the my half-sister who can now talk a little bit. I stayed silent the whole ride until he asked me a question about my school, and when I answered his question he got frustrated and went into a conspiracy theory rant. I tuned him out for the rest of the drive after that. 
the rest of the weekend wasn't any better. The older sister did what she always does when I visit and locked herself in her room, only coming out when I left the house or when I was in the bathroom so she wouldn't have to talk to me. And the younger sister had a friend of hers over and her friend had her stuff tossed on my bed and was sitting on it because it's the bed she sleeps in when she has sleepovers. Sparrick's wife did a poor job of hiding how bothered she was by me visiting. More than once, she has been completely shocked I was visiting because Eric didn't tell her so she couldn't disagree. And also, most of the weekend consisted of Eric taking me and my half-sister to a playground so she could run around with her friends. And I sat on a bench to read, but I didn't have much time to myself since Eric kept leaving and told me to keep an eye on my half-sister, who is a wild and fussy kid. I am not a babysitter. And while I am good with kids, that does not mean I enjoy putting my own time aside to look after them when they're not my responsibility. I had to spend two days in either pure chaos or discomfort, and I had a talk with my mom about me not wanting to go over there anymore. She said that's fine and she won't force me to go anymore, but since she said that before, I don't believe her. I don't have anyone to really talk to about this. And this whole situation is stressing me out because I don't remember my dad ever being as happy as he is now. And I still sometimes feel like I should be happy for him. I don't know what to do and any advice on anything I could do would be helpful. Everyone who's commented on my last post so far has said, I'm not the jerk and that Eric isn't acting the way a dad should, but he still reaches out from time to time and says I'm his baby girl who he loves. Honestly, I almost cry whenever he says that because it reminds me of how we used to be. Am I overthinking all of this or overreacting? What should I do? Am I the jerk here because I'm not happy for my dad? You should tell your mom the more she forces you to go to your dad's the more it's going to ruin your relationship with her, as she's not listening to what you want and how you feel. You should also tell her you no longer trust what she says as she has told you before, that she will no longer force you into going but she does it anyway. That if you can't talk to your mom, have a one-on-one -on -one chat with your stepdad and see if he can help when it comes to your mom. Update 2. Since then I have taken the advice most of you have given me and I talked to my mom about how I don't want to keep being forced by her to visit Eric my sperm donor, as most of you referred to him as. Long story short, I'm not 100% sure she won't continue to send me over to Eric's house, but she did wind up sending him long G texts, chewing him out for not treating me right and telling him to step up and pay his child support. He didn't answer her though, so I followed some other advice and wrote him a long text myself that detailed how I felt about his treatment of me the last few years. So the thing is, as soon as I sent that text, he called me to yell at me and called me spoiled and overdramatic, anarchabinatic. He said it's my fault we don't have a relationship since I never visit or talk to him anymore. And because I mentioned the unpaid child support, he said that I was only reaching out to him for money. I nearly cried during that phone call and wound up just hanging up on him. He sent some angry texts to my mother as well. But later that day, he left a voicemail on my phone saying, money is kind of tight for me right now. Oh, I'm completely broke. You know I love you, right? The thing is that I know that's a lie because I'm always seeing my younger stepsister make TikTok videos showing off the Sephora and other expensive crap he buys her all the time. I think I'm done trying. And some of you suggested asking my stepdad for help. I wish I could, but when I asked my mom again if he could adopt me, she said something that absolutely crushed me. Apparently, my stepdad himself said he doesn't feel like he should adopt me. My stepdad is a very kind and sympathetic man but he's also extremely unconfrontational and thinks it would be like a slap in the face to Eric if he adopted me. Also, because I noticed some confusion about this in the comments on my last update, the reason my parents divorced was because he cheated, but it wasn't with his current wife. My parents split up when I was still basically an infant and Eric lived in Canada where he jumped from girlfriend to girlfriend there before he moved down here and continued to jump from girlfriend to girlfriend. When I was 12, he met and knocked up his wife Alajandra and married her without telling me till a month after their courthouse wedding. Also, some of you asked how old I am. I am 15. It feels ridiculous that I have this stress on me at my age, and I can't really talk to anyone about it. I can't talk to my stepdad because he's always working and I'm only ever with him when my mom is there too, and I don't like talking to her because she always tells me that I'm too young to really feel how I feel. The last time I tried to discuss my mental health with my mom, I asked her if I could start going to therapy and she said that therapists are dumb and that I can just talk to her or pray to God if anything is wrong. I'm not super religious and talking to her about anything serious makes me deeply uncomfortable. It's not that I don't love her since she is my mom after all, but she's pretty intense and intimidating. My dad has not reached out to me again since his voicemail. Frankly, I don't want to even think about him for a long while now if he suddenly realizes how badly he screwed up with me and apologizes then maybe I'll try to rebuild our relationship. As for my stepdad, he may not want to adopt me, but he still calls me his daughter, 
never just his stepdaughter, and I truly feel loved by him. I love his parents like they're my own grandparents, and his whole family is so warm and loving. I might make another update if anything else happens, but for now I'm just going to focus on school and my books. Maybe now that I understand that Eric really doesn't care that much about me anymore, I can finally focus on finishing my third book. I dedicated my first book to him, and I honestly don't regret it. I dedicated that book to the dad he used to be. But it's not like he'll ever read that book, since he doesn't think it's smart that I want to be a writer. But I don't care. I'm done. Thank you to everyone who gave me advice and told me I wasn't the jerk. I feel so much better with those reassurances. Thank you. Update 3. A lot of you were saying that I should talk to a school counselor or something. T. He thing is that I do virtual homeschool and my mom works from home a lot. So I'm honestly just a bit too scared to try that. Plus, even if I did talk to my counselor without my mom being around to hear, I really don't trust any adults to keep these kinds of things to themselves. I know that sounds a bit dumb and paranoid, but it's really just how my brain thinks. A lot of you also said that I should bring up the therapy thing with my mom again, but I know for a fact that won't work. My mom really doesn't believe in therapy and believes that praying to God or having her preach about the Bible to me will solve everything. As for my stepdad, I love the guy like a real father, and I see him as my true dad even if he doesn't want to adopt me. But he really is no help with the therapy issue either because he always just agrees with whatever my mom says to avoid arguments. But I'm doing fine right now though, and I honestly think things are going to start getting better. And I think this because I'm pretty sure my mom is finally going to file for sole custody and court-ordered child support. One thing I guess I should have made clear is that my parents sorted out their custody and child support agreement amongst themselves when they divorced. The agreement is that I spend weekends with my dad, and he pays my mom $100 per week. I'm pretty sure my dad only stuck to that agreement to keep himself looking good until he could finish his U.S. legalization process, since he used to be an immigrant from Canada. Once he was legalized, he stopped paying child support and began spoiling his new fam. Anyway, I went to my dad's house last weekend. This time, my mom didn't force me, and I actually decided I wanted to go because I wanted to give my dad one last chance. He picked me up from my mom's house and we didn't get down the street before we were fighting. Um, I was excitedly telling him about a business idea I had where I can make book boxes and sell books with DIY necklaces and hand-painted bookmarks that match book covers. Mess. Um, support he paid. And he was telling me my idea was stupid and unprofitable and a waste of money and time. It was an hour-long drive to his house, and he was getting political or angry over every little thing I said. And when I told him I was thinking about applying to colleges like Harvard or University of Chicago in the future, he began to yell about all the dangerous Cuban and Mexican immigrants in Chicago and began saying that Harvard is a waste of time since it's just as good as any other college. But rich people go there, which is why it's so famous. I wound up yelling at him that he can't act so high and mighty over non-white immigrants because he was also an immigrant not too long ago. Also, I never understand why it is my dad is always so racist about Hispanic people when my mom and his current wife are both Latinists. He went on one rant after another, and I was so sick of it that instead of staying quiet like always, I actually argued back. Because of that, my dad spent the whole weekend complaining about my bad attitude. I told my mom about all of this. I think the final nail in the coffin that finally pushed her to want sole custody was when I told her about a rant my dad went on about the difference between men and women. I wound up memorizing and writing down everything he said and texted it to my mom. I asked her not to talk to him about it, but she was pissed at him. Here are some of the things he said. 99% of women want to latch on to rich men. Nearly all women are greedy and unloyal. Men don't like successful and independent women because they're prideful and bossy. It's more important for a wife to respect her husband than it is for him to respect her. It is wrong for wives to make more than their husbands, and so much more. And then he smiled and said, But you're the exception, pretty girl. There was so much more that happened just last weekend. Like him saying some of my guy friends don't count as real men's sin, say some of them are gay. And trying to tell me my summer volunteering opportunity in doctor is a bad idea since the people there are different, even though my mom's side of the family comes from there. I won't list every annoying thing he did, and I'm finally done. This was his last chance and he blew it. I just want to say I'm pretty sure my mom is not sending me over anymore. She spent all morning looking for my birth certificate because she's wondering if she needs it for court. She wants to get me full time and have my dad pay child support. At the moment, he owes a lot of child support and having him contribute financially would help me so much with preparing for college. Also, I did not mention the names of my books in the other posts. I didn't share them because I didn't want a bunch of internet strangers seeing my social media tags at the back of the book but I will share the titles with anyone who DMs me. I will probably make another update if anything else happens. Hopefully my next update will be after we've gone to court. You are not the jerk. Divorces and parenting are complicated, 
Your bio dad sounds like a real jerk. He is utterly and completely failing you. I understand why your mom and your stepdad are trying to help you have a relationship with your bio dad. It's one of the things parents are encouraged to do in divorces, because most of the time it's better for the kids. And if your parents had a court order that gave your bio dad visitation on the weekends, then she could be in trouble if you didn't go to your dad's. For your stepdad, he can't adopt you unless your bio dad's parental rights are terminated by a court. And if bio dad fights it, it would be a mess. SD's reluctance to pursue the kind of court battle while you are still legally a minor actually makes sense and I would strongly bet has nothing to do with his feelings for you. He shows his love for you and your place in his heart every day. You don't need him to adopt you for him to be your father. He already is. Please don't let his concerns about the legal mess trying to adopt you would be make you think he loves you any less. Tips. I'm glad your mom is going to go for both full custody and child support. Your bio asshole needs to be held accountable. I'm so sorry for you that you lost your bio dad. He may still be alive, but the father he was is dead. But you did nothing to cause it. He's just putting all his energy into the woman who, I'll say, meets his physical needs and leave it at that. It's an unfortunately common problem. Congrats on your books. It's so impressive.